We come now to the subject of uh, linearization and differentials, and uh, this topic uh, is also called linear approximation. That's often how I'll refer to it, actually, uh, in other books that we've used. That's the name that's given to it. Uh, so anyway, wh what is this topic about? Basically, uh, what this topic is about is about using the tangent line at a particular point that we'll call x equals a. We'll also give it the name center for a reason that will la much, much later become apparent, I think. Um, we can take the tangent line at x equals a and basically use it to stand in for a given function. The theory behind this is that as long as we stay fairly close to x equals a, the, uh, the tangent line is a pretty good approximation of, of the function. Now, of course, the function could go off in all sorts of wild directions as we get further and further from a, but as long as we stay pretty close to a, the tangent line can give us a good approximation, and there are some, some applications that we can do with that. So um, let's take a look at this drawing. What I've done here is I've drawn in uh, this function, y equals f of x, that you'll see in purple, and I've also put in a point x equals a, so let's highlight those. Now, um, I've also, and then I've also drawn in in red the tangent line at, at x equals a. So the, the question is, if we were to move a little bit away from a in the horizontal direction, what y value would we get to? That's, that's the question that we're, answer, that we're asking. And what we'll see is that we have an exact y value that we would arrive at, and we also have an approximate y value. So um, anyway, let's, uh, let's define the terms that we're, that, that we're using here. In order to describe that this point here is a little is a little bit is, is a little bit of horizontal distance away from a, I'm describing it as x plus dx. If you've been following along uh, all semester, what you know is that we use terms like dx or delta x to refer to a little bit of change in the horizontal direction. Um, the fact is that dx, and as long as x is the independent variable, dx and delta x have the same value. Um, I'm going to do this the way our textbook does, and I'm going to refer to it as dx, but I will note that dx is the same as delta x. So, um, so anyway, the, 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 this point here is a distance dx away from a, and of course the, diff the, the, the amount of distance that they are apart from each other is just dx itself. So this point here is a, and this one is going to be a plus dx. Now, if I were to ask what is what is the value of y at at, at x equals a plus dx, that's fairly there, there's at least a fairly straightforward symbolic way to calculate that. I can just write in the actual point here. This is going to be a plus dx. That's the x part of the coordinate and its y coordinate. It's y, the y part of its coordinate is going to be f of a plus dx. That's you know, just straightforward algebra that every point on a curve is going to be some, you know, some x value comma f of that x value. And uh, we can see as I've written here what that y value is. That's, that's, the, that's the y value of this green point that I'm pointing to. But there's also, uh, there's, there's also a good approximation of that value that we can get to by following the tangent line instead of the actual curve. So if you imagine that I jump off this purple curve and instead follow this red tangent line, the question is, what point do I get to? Well, in order to, in order to answer that question, let me just point out here that this is the y value f of a. In other words, that's the y value of the original point, green point here that's over f of a. If I follow the tangent line a distance of dx, just uh, oops, wrong color, if I follow it to the tangent line, a distance of dx to the right of a, let's take, a, take note of, of where I get to. The tangent line, let me do this in red because that's the color of the tangent line, has a slope of f prime of a, right? That's what we do with derivatives, was we find the slope of the tangent line. And if that's the case, then we know that m is equal to the rise over the run. So I'm traveling a distance of dx in the horizontal direction. And um, what I do is, if, if that's the case, then we're going to call the distance in the vertical direction that I, that I follow when I, when I move along this tangent line, we're going to call it dy. A little algebra shows that if I multiply this equation by, if I multiply this equation by dx, I get dy is equal to m times dx, where m is the slope of the tangent line. But I know that dy, that since m is just, is just the derivative at a, dy is equal to f of a times dx. So what that means is that gives us the y value that you see here, which is I started with f of a, 
and by following the tangent line, a distance dx in the horizontal direction, I end up this amount. I end up f prime of a times dx going that amount in the vertical direction, so I simply add that to f of a, ending up at this point. What that means is that what that means is that this value here is considered to be a good approximation of this value. So now we finally get to the term linearization. We refer to this tangent line as the linearization of a function at a particular point. In particular, we're going to call this tangent line the linearization of f at x equals a. It's not enough just to say that the tangent line is the linearization of f, because the question is where. If instead of drawing, if instead of choosing x equals a, if instead I chose a point like the one I'm pointing to here, I would get a different slope of a tangent line, and therefore I'd have a different, I'd have a different tangent slope, and therefore I'd have a different tangent line. So I need to know not only what the original function is, but also a particular value of x that I'm using as the point of tangency. So we refer to this red line as the linearization of f at a, and we treat it as being a good approximation of f itself. So let me put up the definition. We're going to say that the linearization of f at a is given by this formula. Specifically, L of x, that's the word we use for linearization, is equal to f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. Now, where does, where does this exact formulation come from? The thing to observe here is that if I pick some, some value x like that, what I can do is I can refer to, let's just put, up, put it in purple, I can refer to this distance as x minus a, and you'll also recognize that from the earlier diagram as that's just what we're calling dx. So basically, x minus a is dx. Okay. Now from there, we simply observe that what's in the box here is just the equa is just a, a general equation for the tangent line at x equals a. Let me just show you why. This is the point a comma f of a, correct? That's in general how we write the equation of a point that's on the uh, of a point that's on a functional curve. So now let's write the general equation. Use point slope form to write the equation of the tangent line at that point. We know that point slope form is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So we can see that the point x1 y1 is just this. So that gives us y minus f of a equals m x minus a. And then finally, what's m? We know that the slope of this tangent line is just m equals f prime of a, because that's how we get the slope of the tangent line. So that finally gives us y, well not finally, y minus f of a equals f prime of a x minus a. And then just rearranging this equation a bit, we get y equals f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. And then, if you notice, this is the same thing as what I've written in the box, so I'm just renaming y. I'm just giving it a fancy name, which is L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. So, I know there's a lot of fancy symbols here, but basically, if you've, if you've absorbed the lessons from earlier in the chapter where you know how to find the equation of a tangent line at a particular point, you know how to find the linearization, because that's all we're doing. It's just a fancy name for it. So you can, if you're asked for the linearization, you can either just find the, the equation of the, ta the tangent at the given point, or you can remember this formula. And you should be able to interpret this formula, but that's, uh, you, know, you can find it either way. Now, what's the significance of this? What it means is that if I'm trying to find the value or approximate value of a function at the point x, which I've written here, I can, once I have the linearization, I can either find its exact value, which is just going to be the point x comma f of x, or I can find its approximate value, which is the point x comma l of x, or more specifically, the approximate value of the function at x, at, at x is this number, l of x. One thing that I really want to promise you is that despite all of this sort of theory, uh, this is a topic that becomes much easier when you see the examples. 
Uh, so uh, just bear with me through the definitions. Uh, you're always welcome to turn back to these, uh, you know, as you're working through the examples. But uh, this is one of those strange topics where the theory, the, the, the general explanation is actually more complicated than the specific examples. I want to turn, however, to one more definition before we get on to the examples, and that's the definition of a differential. Um, I've referred to differentials in the past, and now we want to be a little bit more formal about what they are. I've said that basically dy over dx is kind of a way of writing the derivative of a function, but uh, each of the individual components, dy and dx, is referred to as a differential. So let's make that formal and say that dx and dy are in fact differentials. And uh, the important point is that they're related by this equation. dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. That's something you can almost derive you know, directly from the fact that dy over dx is the derivative. In other words, if y equals f of x, then dy over dx is just the derivative of f. So if I simply multiply both sides of this equation by dx, I get dy is equal to f prime of x dx. There's, there's not a lot more to it than that. A little bit later uh, in these videos, we're going to get to examples where we calculate uh, derivatives because that is a type of problem that appears in the section. But uh, in reality, all you have to do is just find the derivative itself and just multiply your result by dx because that's precisely what this equation is saying. Uh, so I just want to make formal the fact that we are in this section encountering the term differential for the first time. And all it really means is that individually dx and dy are called differentials and we would say that their ratio is the derivative.